Hello everyone, this is Diane Murray at Southern Art Gallery and today I am painting the still life of these grapes and apples and plums and I have laid in the basic um, underlying washes. This is a very dark background. This is the black and white of the actual painting and I'll post the actual um, photograph that I um, got off Pixabay so that you can see. Basically done a uh, value sketch of the painting. And this is the process that I use. I actually um, do a value sketch before I paint anything. It really helps in making sure that your darks are dark enough and that you have all the values that you need. So basically I have laid down a wash, an underlying wash of lemon yellow. And this is cerulean blue with a little bit of uh, quinacridone magenta mixed in. This is a black that I made uh, using the three primaries, ultramarine, pyrrole, red, and uh, new gamboge. And I made this black. So I'm just building on the blacks in the dark background. I'm, um, I'm fixing to lay in a wash of quinacridone magenta over the apple, but I've got to get the greens in first. So this green is basically a mixture of lemon yellow and phthalo blue. And I'm just putting that in. And I have masked over the veins in the actual leaves after I uh, laid in a wash of lemon yellow. And this is the process that I like to use, particularly with botanicals. I just do a lot of layering until I get the uh, values and the depth that I need. So that's basically the green. To make this particularly soft, I will go ahead and wet this apple first because we really want these colors merging together. So do a little bit of the Quim Magenta. Going with the shape of the apple. And where it touches the yellow, it will uh, merge a little bit and make a little bit more of an orange color. And while it's still wet, I'm dropping a little of the pile of red because it is a red apple. And it is splotchy, so you don't want a uh, solid texture on this. Because this this apple has a mottled look, so I'm going to keep that. And I'm painting off my iPhone so I can't show you the actual photograph, but I will post a, a um, picture of it. Let's see what we're doing here. Keep that yellow there. Okay, I'm going to let that dry.
soft. So that's with a very light touch. Then we'll move over to the plums, and the plums have a very, very dark red. They're also very mottled. And they've got a red here. And this red was made with. Um, Quinacridone magenta and pyro red and a little bit of Payne's Gray for that depth. Build that up gradually as we go. Let's some shadow. All right, and I'm going to take and go straight in with a, a cerulean blue mixed with a little bit of the um, magenta. wet into wet here. Just to give those plums some interest. dry a little bit. Okay, so that's our plums. We actually have one grape over here, which is quite uh, of a magenta color. That's my bird you hear in the background there. So I'm just going to let that settle in right there. Plums. We'll put some more blue in there and a little bit. And this brush that I'm using is a, is a number 10 Skoda Perla. It's a synthetic brush. It offers you a lot more control, so that's why I like to use it when I'm going in, uh, into more detail. So I'm going to go ahead and start layering in the underlying. These grapes are quite dark. They're very um, dark purple. And then we'll keep darkening them as we go. They're almost black. And they have what's called a bloom on top of them, which basically is a um, characteristic of grapes. And if you want this to be softer, just wet the grape, each grape, before you actually go in there. And you'll be able to um, soften them up. I'll just add a little bit of water like that. I like my grapes to be very watery. And we're just going to build these just like we've done 
all the other grapes and where the shadows are of the actual grapes. I'm going to add that same blue mix to make it a little bluer so that it reads more like a shadow. There's a shadow under this one as well. And over here. And that's just how I do it. Just keep working them until you get them. Um, there'll be many layers on these grapes. And if you lose your highlights, just blot it out. These grapes are very, these grapes are very modely, so they really need to be modeled. Like this, so generally that's what I do when I come in and work them. There's a grape behind this grape. You just go around and just do more, you know, just continuous layers like this, softening as you go. You won't get any really harsh lines, and believe it or not, they will look much more believable. This one is actually all the way up to here, but he's in the dark, so let me just. Another way you can do this is to just put the darks in, clean your brush, and then just touch the lights. So you want to do it that way, that makes a nice look also. Many different ways to do this. Whatever way you're comfortable in, that's wet onto wet. That's just dropping it in the wet. Get in there, you can do it that way. That works nicely as well. Definitely slowly. That one has a shadow down under there. And that one has a very dark area in there. And it's good to vary the, the uh, make some of the grapes. Uh, a little warmer and some a little cooler because it does tend to make it more believable. I don't know exactly what's happening in there, so I'm just kind of. If you're not sure what's going on, don't make it up. Just just put something in there. It usually works the best. Where you have grapes, the ones that are behind are, of course, darker than the ones in the front that are getting more light. Hard edge. That's also a shadow. 